Hey everybody, welcome to today's live watercolor session. I'm Sarah Giese and I am an artist and I'm a wife and a mom and we decided to do these tutorials just kind of on a whim because we're all separated right now but we were really wanting to come together, make some beauty, get together as much as we can and learn a skill, calm our minds for an hour and make something pretty. So this is a pretty little thing. What we're really wanting is to have a connection with the creativity that we have, that we've been given, and then also a connection with each other a little bit. So welcome, glad you're here. Um, today we're gonna make this little um, floral frame is what I call it. So <laughs> that's what we're gonna make today. Um, similar to yesterday's, um, we're going to use some masking tape. We're going to paint around that masking tape so that we have a little frame. And you can write whatever you want inside. So uh, let's get started. These are the tools you're going to need. Um, you'll need your paints. So any old paints will do, watercolor paints. You can use these paints um, that you have maybe in your kid's stash. They work just fine. Uh, we're going to be using purples and pinks and maybe a red and then a brown for the, one of the um, stems and then green for another of the stems. So, yep, those are the colors you'll need. And really, truly, you can make these, these um, flowers any, other, any old color you want. You know, if you have a house, colors in your house you want to match, go for it. You know, use your, use your imagination. We have some orchids here, which are my favorite. I say that Tulips are my favorite, but orchids are my favorite because they last for a long time. And I've finally gotten them to come back a year later. It's possible. Anyway, um, orchids can be any old color. They can be crazy colors. They can be tigery, you know, sh lots of speckles and stuff. You know, do what you, what you want. Okay, so you need your paints. You'll need um, some masking tape or some painter's tape. Um, painter's tape would be better, the blue kind, because it wouldn't stick so much, but I only have masking tape. Some scissors, and then I'm going to use um, a number, what is this, a number one paintbrush, and my Sharpie, and my white paint pen. So those are the colors, those are the things you're going to need, and also water, of course, water for watercolors. Okay. So this time I had a little hard time figuring out what I wanted to do. I kept messing around with it. So I could say, I could show you, this is the first one I came up with. Well, this is the very first one I came up with. And then I came up with this one. And then, you know, I landed on this one. <laughs> the problem with that second one was it just took so long. So hopefully this is going to be a better, timely painting. It's really loose. And I put a lot of detail in the drawing so that we don't have to worry about putting the, the detail in as we go. So that is the other piece to the puzzle that you're gonna need is the drawing, this template. Um, it is in the link below this video and it's also in um, the album called Templates on my Facebook page there. So print that out, put it on the, wa the watercolor paper through your printer with graphite paper, however you're gonna do that. If you want to do it, um, make it your own, you can always go in and draw whatever's coming to your mind. Same concept, but with your own little shapes and own, your own um, flowers. Lots of different ways of doing flowers. I mean, I use totally different flowers on this one, right? Not orchids, not this other kind. I don't even know what, maybe. They look kind of like, um, I don't know. I shouldn't even bring it up. Because when we were in California, we had a tree in our yard that we called the tulip tree. It was not the name of it, but it looks kind of like that. <laughs> they looked like beautiful tulips all along the uh, branches. Anyway, so the first thing we're going to do is get our masking tape set. So if you see the template, you can see that there's this outline in the middle that's missing any kind of drawing. I did overlap one little flower just for interest's sake. Um, and that is on this drawing here, but we're going to put the tape over that spot and we'll paint it later uh, after we pull up the tape. Okay, so 
Let's just pull the tape off here and we're gonna lay it down in this area right here where there's, where we wanna block the paint from coming, okay? Again, don't push too hard because that paint, oh, my hair is gonna drive me crazy today. Because that paint is gonna um, wanna come under it. So we do wanna push it down a bit, but when we, we, when we pull this up, we don't want it to rip the paper. Okay, so don't push too hard if you don't have that um, painter's tape like me. Okay, well, I'm being messy here. Okay, so we're gonna put one layer there and we'll put another one on the other side. Last week, yesterday we did this and we didn't have to worry about the edges um, because they were on off of the paper, right? Here we're gonna have to cut with our with our scissors to make a, a straight line on the bottoms and the tops. Okay, so right now that's not even, but we'll even it out with this top and bottom layer of paint of tape. Okay, so these are gonna need to be straight. Straight sides. I don't know if I made this long enough. We're filling in that spot where there's, where we want nothing. When I did this before, there was nothing. <laughs> then I painted around it this time. You have to match it up, okay? So I didn't match it quite right, so I'm just gonna go in with a little piece and match it that way. I want that corner to be just right. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And this corner is pretty good. Yep. All right, and the bottom. Now, if you're not going to use this tape, if you'd rather just, um, you know, let it be flowy and not a stark line, you know, you could do that and skip the tape if, if you would rather today. It's no big deal. You can make it however you want. Okay. Pretty good. There's a little spot there that I think I need to cover with a little piece to make that corner. Okay. I hope it comes up because I pushed down pretty hard. <laughs> we might have some ripping going on. Okay. It'll be more excitement and fun, right? Okay. So let's look at the painting now. Now that we have our um, blocking tape there. Um, Line it all this way, other way. Okay, it's so weird because it's backwards up there. Okay, so let's look at the t the the example here. I have two different kinds of flowers. I made some orchids here and an orchid down here. These are orchids, and then I mixed in this kind of flower here and down here, just kind of for variation. Now, the coloring is not very different. If you wanted it to be, I, this time I might even make it more different, make these look a little more differentiated from those, whatever you feel like. Um, but yeah, there are different kinds. If you look at the shapes of those flowers, they are different, okay? So we'll start with these orchids here. Um, like I said, the, the outline is pretty dark be, and, and pretty detailed because I wanted to just, um, loosely put the color in to these flowers. Um, we don't have enough time in an hour to give all kinds of little detail and draw, um, draw the flowers with the paint so much as we're just gonna fill in these colors, okay? Um, 
So really you notice it's, it's super loose. It's kind of flowy in there. We're not gonna color, cover every little inch of each petal. We're gonna let it be kind of messy. That's the kind of style I did anyway. Okay, so I'm going in with a lighter pink first, all like a base color of pink for these orchids. Then I'll go in with a darker pink for these middle spots here. Okay, so that's the first step. All right, so finding those orchids all along here. I'm gonna go in with a pink with a lot of water and just let it be flowy and fill in that space so that it looks colored in. I'm not going to the edges. I'm not being precise. This is a style. It's a kind of a loose, loosey goosey style today. And that one's a lot brighter. So I'm going to put more water so that it matches. And then I'm not going to put any more paint on. I'm just going to keep moving down <laughs> with the water to lighten that up a little bit. And, you know, watercolors do lighten as they dry, so don't worry. I'm using a lot of water. I'm being very loose about it. <clears throat> now there's two over here as well. There's the... Oh, I forgot this little bud here, but there's this, this orchid and this bud, so we'll go in and do those two as well. Yeah, I was having a good time making some of the other um, examples, but like I said, I, I was being more precise, and it took just so much longer. <laughs> I was like, eh, we're going to be here for two hours if I do it this way. So I kind of looked up some, some artists that I know that I love their work they, and they're very, very loose like this. And I thought, well, I can do this. I'm going to do that. There's a girl, a uh, lady named Allie Brown. She's here in San Antonio. I met her once because um, our kids went to the same co-op. So look her up. She's got some cool stuff. Um, and her art is very loose, like really, really loose compared to this even. Um, but yeah, she does lots of flowers and pencil drawings and then adding a little bit of, um, a little bit of color. It's kind of fun. Okay, so I have a base coat of yellow, um, pink there. Um, I'm gonna go in on these and do their base coats as well. So here I used a light purple kind of fuchsia color, um, which ended up being similar to the color I put in the middle of these orchids. So I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna go, will it mess you up if I use a different color? I'm gonna go a little bluer. I'm gonna make it a little more blue purple. Hope that doesn't mess you up. Let's see which color. You know, just because we can. Yeah, I'm gonna try this one. Okay, so again, real loose. See how that's a lot darker purple than what I used on the example. You could do yellow, you could do any old color. I'm leaving some of these white, th these flowers, I left some overlap kind of areas where the petals are overlapping and you can see the back side. I'm going to leave those white just so that they look like there's some variation in the, in the, um, in the color. Yeah, so just let that flow. Obviously, because we're being so loose, it's not going to be perfectly in the lines. It's kind of the the um, charm of this kind of painting. It's just a little so loose that it's out of control a little bit. <laughs> All right. Oh, 
which one was it? Oh yeah, this one. <laughs> Keep on going. We're just going to put this base coat on and then we'll go in with more colors to um, show the depth, you know, how we've done in the past with flowers. You show that when the petals go together, there's going to be a, a shadow. So there'll be a dark darkness in the middles, you know. But we'll go in and do that later. First coat, just let it be nice and loose. Nice and loose. So last night we got to have a, a double date over Zoom <laughs> with our friends in California. It was fun. I just talked and talked. Makes you realize how much you miss being with people when you're with people. <laughs> It's almost the same, sitting across the table from each other, sort of. Okay, so I've got my pink and my purple. It looks very pastel right now. It looks like Easter. Okay, <clears throat> now that I have that, these these guys are probably pretty dry. I'm going to go in with a more um, a darker pink like a fuchsia color and I'm going to add in some of the details you know orchids can be so crazy they're so cool um, these orchids that I was looking at they had kind of this kind of like little cheeks poking out with this dark color like that and then they had these lines coming up from here. That's really pretty. So that's how I'm doing that. I might even go in and make it darker as it dries. You know, we can never really tell what it's going to look like. So kind of like little cheeks on either side of their middles and then some lines going straight up. Same thing here. I want them to flow out a little bit more even, so I'm adding water. And I'll probably go back in and add even darker right in the middle there. Just want that to kind of be that secondary color. And then this one goes up too. Nice and light, light lines lifting as you go up so that they get smaller as they go. Oops. Okay, and on this one, same thing. And then straight up from there. Now these little bud things are kind of funny. They're, they're kind of unfurling orchids. I think it, they looked really wiggly and squiggly. Um, so I kind of just made them look like that. I'm going to add a darker color along the edges here. But really just kind of whatever. <laughs> kind of random. They're just pink, you know, just pink. And then here as well. Loose is the game we're playing today. Nice 
symbols. Okay, let that layer dry and we'll go in and even make even more dark. See how that's, see how that's still pretty light comparatively? And we'll go in and get a little bit more color in there once it dries. All right, we'll go into these and make, we're gonna make it darker inside in the, in the middle by the pistols, by the little stamen there. And we'll pull the darkness up and then by the outside edges, these um, petals will be the lightest, okay? So, hmm, what color? Purple. Okay, so I'm gonna go in right here and pull the dark, just start it in the middle here. And then as they go up, it's gonna get lighter and lighter. And I'm gonna add water to what I already put there and just let it flow around. See how that is? Flowy, flowy. Okay, here too. Dark in the middle. I'm gonna make this whole thing dark. This looks like it's a middle petal there. Darkness in the middle. A lot of water in, the, in this paint. <clears throat> Darkness along the edges. The middle. Like that. Okay, and then I'll go in with water and just pull those up. See how that works? Pull it out into the rest of the deal. Each petal, let it be loose. If it goes out of the lines, that's fine. Just want it to look kind of flowy and romantic. <laughs> okay, continuing on. Go up in here, make this one all dark. But then the darkness coming up from where the petals are meeting, as there would be a shadow, the way they they grow. Maybe I'll bring this shadow way down here. There's this shadow up here. I forgot this guy. Okay, and as we go up, I'm going to add, ooh, I didn't wash my brush well enough. I'm gonna wick that up, wick it up. That is not the color I wanted there. There we go. Clean my brush, just go in with water. Just pull that different purple up. Yeah. Nice and easy. okay if it's messy we're not going to try to control everything we have believed that we could control things for a long time and i think we're all learning that's it's not really the case is it okay i'm turning my paper around so that i can reach this without touching the wet i know sometimes it gets a little bit confusing to look at i'm sorry i'll do this as quickly as i can but it might be helpful for you to move your paper up as well or turn it around. You can see better. It's kind of like you know, poor left-handed people. They are always having to do that, right? But you know how a lefty, when they write across the paper, they're dragging their hand across the graphite, you know? And they always have the, brown, the black hand. It'll happen 
That'll happen with the wet paint as well. So just move it around. So you can reach. Pulling all that around. Okay, last one. Bringing this purple into the middle. Pulling it up to the tips. Oh, it's Thursday today, yeah? Friday, no, Thursday. Thursday. On the weekends, my husband, since this COVID thing, my husband's been saying he's going to um, smoke meat every Sunday. So the last couple of weeks, we've had brisket, When we moved to Texas, he, everybody was smoking meat, so he learned the ways, and it's pretty yummy. In California, we would make tri-tip, but we can't even get tri-tip here in Texas. They don't do that cut, I guess. Okay, we've got those colors down and we're going to go back in on the the orchids now do that third layer okay just going to lay layer in so that the darkness gets it's light on the outside and gets darker toward that middle part so just continue on use a little that fuchsia again I'm going to use a little even darker fuchsia just so I can get that to be nice and dark in there just kind of, it looked like little, little cheeks coming out of the middle. <laughs> so just adding, each layer adds some dimension, adds some, you know, detail. Oh, there's a little bud I didn't paint earlier. Maybe it should be fuchsia. Okay. Do a little bit more here. Well, this is one of those paintings where there's not a right way to go about it. There's not going to be, you're not going to look at it and go, oh, that, I don't know what that is. It's going to look like flowers no matter what. <laughs> so this is a kind of an exercise in listening to yourself, listening to your
Are we, are we here? You can hear me? I think we have a solution. Sorry about that, everybody. Are we back? Okay. So um, I was telling you about how my husband was, we were, we've been watching birds and, and squirrels and stuff. So he came running in and was looking through the binoculars and he, he there's this blue bird that was like this, like this color of my shirt or like super bright blue, like a cardinal, but blue. And we'd never seen it in our yard before, but that was really fun to see. And it was like, um, I don't remember the name of it, but it was called the bird of happiness. Oh, isn't that cool? Like, yay. We'll take it. Happiness, just happiness was visiting us. <laughs> so this bird has been seen as a harbinger of happiness for many centuries. Kind of fun. Like, hey, we're happy. That's good. <laughs> Welcome, little bird. We do have the same birds always in the yard. We have a we have a cardinal couple, we have some doves, and there's some hawks that come by. And sometimes they drop half of their prey on our, in our yard and then the dog has a field day. Anyway, spring is happening here. Hopefully it's happening pretty soon where you are. I know in Minnesota, my family is, they've, they've had a few days and then it gets cold again and I'm glad it's on its way. All right, one more, putting the blue in this last one here. And then we'll go in and do stems before we finish off with the details. The details are like putting your lipstick on, right? Get all your makeup on and then finish that last mascara or the lipstick and you feel like, oh yeah, that looks good. Until then it looks a little bit unfinished, right? As it should, because you're not done. All right. Adding in the blue, the darkness in the middle where those petals meet. And I thought this is kind of a fun one because you can put anything you want on the in the words on the inside. You can put your favorite verse, you could put, you know, Happily married since <laughs> your anniversary. I don't know. You can make some a gift like that, you know, for somebody. You could write your kid's name and their birth date or something. I don't know. Whatever you want. All right. So we've got the the colors down. Let's do the let's do the um, stems. So the stems on the orchid are green and the stems on this other kind of plant <laughs> are brown. Okay, so I'm going in with like a, it's a pretty green green. It's, it's kind of like a hunter green. And I'm gonna go and do this stem. Now this one's crossing over and it's gonna be brown because it's on this plant. But this is green here. So it's gonna be this one I'm gonna be a little more careful with just because it is a kind of defined shape on the picture. So I'm not gonna go out of the lines too much with this. But I am gonna let it be a little rough, not fully. I'm leaving a little bit of white space. And if you have control of it, you can put darker 
a darker green along one edge so that it looks like it's a rounded shape. Okay. Continuing on. Now these little buds, they had a lot of buds, green, and they're green. So just gonna keep making them green. This little bud, I'm gonna make mostly green and have a little bit of pink poking out for one of the little, one of the little bumps, be pink. And the buds. Okay, I'm gonna go back in and make one of the sides darker. This underside would have a shadow. I'm just gonna go under there and make it a little bit darker. Now over here, we have a, a little bit of the green. We have a tiny little stem there. So we'll go in and get this green going. Little bud. Another little bud. Those buds on orchids are so exciting. That means a flower is coming. It's so fun. When there's a whole stem of buds all lined up. I love it. It's fun now that I have my oldest is 18. And for Mother's Day, he got me an orchid because he knows I like them. And he picked the one. They were all speckly and weird, and he goes, I picked it because it's weird looking, Mom. I knew you'd like it. <laughs> it's fun to like watch your kids turn into like young men. That's amazing. Actual people who pay attention and know you. I love it. So cool. Not that they weren't people before, but you know what I mean. Okay. So those are the green stems. Now I'll go in with the brown and do the brown stems. So I'm gonna just use any old brown. Nothing special. And this little area is gonna be brown. They're more like a woody stem, you know? So I made them a little jaggedy because they, they had kind of a woody jagged stem. I really miss that little tree we had in, in California. It was so pretty. It was a perfectly round, low cut tree. And then There was a, there was a, um, what do you call it when there's no water, a drought. When we came back, it was dead. <laughs> so it's sad. It brought me a lot of joy every year. Loved it. It wasn't one that you could pick. You couldn't pick them. They would die right away once you picked them. But the tree itself was so pretty. A whole tree full of pink tulips. Okay, going around to the very last little bit here. We've got all the essentials filled in. 
I've noticed that I didn't put the pink in that little bud, so I'll go in and do that. I'll use this one here. I'll just let that be in there. I didn't paint this bud. Maybe I'll make that green too. Just I don't know what color that would be. Maybe purple, but all right. Now the inside of these um, orchids are orange and red. They had brown in there. So I'm going to go in with a bright orange, like a burnt orange, and make one dot of that color. Most of these have, have one little dot. I'm going to make those that dark brown orange color. Okay. And then on the sides, around that little dot, they had, it was like a yellowish color, yellowish orange brown <laughs> color. So I'll go in and put that around the sides. These little guys here. Ooh, touched the orange too much. It'll all turn orange. Okay. And then I'm going to use a little bit of brown too in there for that bottom little dot. Just a little. Okay. All right. Last thing we'll do with the paint is I think I will go in with a little bit of red in the very centers of these purples. Just for something different to pop out. Just a little bit of a red there. Maybe here. All right, and now we're going to do our little details, okay? So if you have them, we're going to use these two. We're going to use a paint pen and a black Sharpie. If you have a small black pen or a small black marker, that will work. If you don't have a paint pen, you can use white paint or you could use... Um, well, really just white paint or maybe you could use, you know, another kind of color that's light, but it's not going to necessarily show up where we're going to put it. So, you know, you can use your imagination. You could use the Sharpie on all of them, all the paintings, all the flowers if you want. Okay, so you'll see on the, the example here, I use the, the white paint pen to make some dots made me think of my son giving me the cute weird orchid from mother's day so just some dots on on the petals and maybe a little bit of drawing um, around those pistols in the in the inner circle of the orchid um, really just little lines here and there that might make make it look more defined okay and then the black is going to go in on these purple flowers for their pistols on the inside of theirs okay all right so all of that looks a little bit wet so we'll see how it goes here let's try using this white paint pen Ooh, it kind of exploded on me let's see so just going to put some dots on these petals And then just scratching little outlines. Nothing super 
dramatic and nothing very precise. <laughs> Here and there. And the cool thing about this white paint pen is it will take on some of the color from underneath. So they'll turn kind of pink. whatever color you've got underneath there. This one I'm just gonna make a little scratchy. Some details turning so I don't get the wet on my hand. See how messy and scratchy that was? But it adds some detail to what's going on in the middle there. Okay. okay. Orchids are amazing. Did you know that or that Vanilla beans come from the orchid. That's amazing. Something so tasty and wonderful comes from the most beautiful flower. Crazy. We learned that. I don't remember when we learned that. I was like, what? Are you sure? Maybe not all orchids, but an orchid. Okay, so in the middle of these flowers. We're going to make some scribbly marks like that just to indicate their little stamen. And then maybe some dots and some squiggles just to make it look like that's their flower. Right? Let it be nice and squiggly, loose, See how that kind of works. Okay, this one has stamen coming out this way. I don't know why. Okay. And this one, my pen is getting full of paint on it so it wasn't wanting to draw. Almost the best, the messier, the messier the better. <laughs> paint on the tip of my pen, my Sharpie, and then it doesn't want to draw anymore. Dry paint, but paint nonetheless. Okay, so there we've got that. Those details going on. Maybe a little bit of dots coming out of there. Why not? Now the last thing I did, if you notice, I put a little bit of a green tint all around just so that the this outline will be nice and visible. You see that? So the, it's easy to do. I just use a lot of water, put the water down, and I used like a, the same green I used here, but I just added a whole lot of water to it. Um, this is not a necessary step, but it's just kind of adds to the, the frame of it all. <laughs> so I just added a little bit of green paint and water, 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 all throughout. 
just as light as can be, but that very light paint is enough to show off the, the frame. You could use any color really. Or just leave it and it'll be just very, you know, flowers around a blank middle. And I'll be just fine too. Adding water and paint as light as can be. If it gets too dark in one area, grab it, wick it up with your brush and move it over to another place. <laughs> Now, if you think of, of the words that you want to write in inside your little frame, just be mindful about what you, you know, want to do. Think about it. I would suggest doing something I didn't do and make some little lines with a ruler so that you draw, so you write straight. Because I just winged it wing it, wonged it, wung it, wing it, and it was a little bit crooked. And you only get one chance after all this painting, you want to get it, get it right if you're going to do it right. So <laughs> my husband did tell me I should probably print it, but I didn't. Okay, so looking at it from here, you can barely see that there's even any green paint laid down there. But once we pull it up, you'll be able to see, see that little rectangle nice and clearly. Okay, we ready for the big reveal? Let's see, hopefully it didn't seep too far under there. And I don't wanna rip it, so be super careful, just go super slow. And if you start seeing any ripping, stop and try going from the other direction. It's kind of satisfying, isn't it? It's like vacuuming. There's something cool about vacuuming. Like a rug, you know? See those lines nice and clean? If you want to, you can wait until this is all dry. Probably be a better idea. But I'm, for the sake of time, I'm gonna push through here. Ta-da! We have a clean spot in the middle. So fun. Okay, so like I said, I did have a little flower overhanging there just to show that there's just to be a little bit not all the way in bounds you know we're gonna it kind of makes it a little more interesting so i'm gonna add pink paint to that little spot and if you rub where the line is it should come up enough to like allow you to paint right over the top. So no line is visible. There you go. So I would suggest getting a ruler out and making little very faint pencil lines so that when you write whatever you're gonna write, it's nice and straight. Or you could um, print something out and paste it there, you know. But that is a fun way to do it, right? You could do this with any kind of um, any kind of painting and any kind of flowers. Um, it's another little tool in your toolbox. If you want to make something beautiful, it'd be a great gift. Something something you can share. So share with me what you decided to put in. 
share with me your your beautiful flowers and um i'd love to see i like to see it when you share what you've made there's there's something about making it in the privacy of your own house and your own room and being alone but then there's something really cool about sharing it and putting beauty out into the world it's definitely vulnerable because it's something from this came from inside you and it's coming out right but vulnerability uh, isn't isn't bad it's actually the strength it, it, it actually means you're being strong when you let yourself be vulnerable so let me see it <laughs> I really pray that you guys have a blessed evening, that you have grace and wholeness in your homes. Oh, I forgot to tell you, tonight is paint paint party night. So if you are still wanting to do that, I think we have several people signed up for that. This is the painting we're going to do tonight at 8 o'clock central, so sign up. It'll be on Zoom. We'll get to talk and be together. Anyway, grace and peace and wholeness to you guys, to each of you and your whole households, and I will see you next Wednesday. Have a good night. <laughs>